Hi everyone, welcome to the next uh, Easter Reflection from MCF. Uh, and today we're just looking at a few verses in John chapter 21. This is one of the resurrection appearances of Jesus. And uh, in this particular one, it's after uh, some of the disciples have been fishing all night and they haven't caught anything. And then Jesus is on the shore of Lake Galilee and he sees them and he tells them to let the net down the other side of the boat, uh, which they do. And in a repeat of an earlier miracle, they then get this huge catch of fish, which they then drag uh, onto the shore. Uh, and then they have breakfast together with the risen Jesus. Uh, and the few verses I want to read this morning is just straight after they've had breakfast. And this is taken from the book of John and the last chapter, chapter 21. And verse 15, we read this. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, uh, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, Jesus said to him, follow me. This is a passage that's often called the restoration of Peter because the, the three times in the passage that Jesus says to Peter, do you love me, kind of mirror the three times that, Jesus, uh, that Peter denied Jesus in the run up to the crucifixion. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, how do you learn from mistakes that we make in our lives? Do we learn from them? You know, one of the things I remember at work is we often used to uh, say or hear said, you know, don't mind you making mistakes so long as you learn from them. And often that meant don't do them again. Um, saying that and then actually living by that are two very di different things. Uh, but here in this passage, we've got a model from Jesus about how to handle mistakes, mistakes in our own life that we make and mistakes that other people uh, might make that actually affect us and impact our lives. Is that, I wonder how Peter was feeling. You know, he denied Jesus three times. He'd followed Jesus passionately. He was, you know, one of these guys that spoke first and thought later. Uh, and yet at the very hour when perhaps Jesus needed him the most, when it was time to nail his colours to the mast. He'd actually denied Jesus, not just once, but, but three times. And you kind of wonder, well, how was Peter feeling about all of that and, and handling all of that? Did he, you know, did he want to brush it under the carpet? That's often one of our strategies, isn't it? Like we make a mistake and we do something wrong and we just brush it under the carpet. Did, did he want to move on? After all, Jesus kind of changed everything by coming back to life by the resurrection you know and maybe now that just meant it was all irrelevant it didn't really matter anymore the fact that I denied you three times Lord because well you're alive from the dead and and everything's changed surely it doesn't matter you know or, or I wonder you know each time he saw Jesus after the resurrection you know and they're in the room together or, or whatever is he thinking uh okay uh, are you thinking what I'm thinking Lord um uh, when are you going to say something about what I did? Um, when's that going to... And that awkwardness, you know, sometimes the awkwardness we have if, we, if we've done something wrong uh, or upset somebody and then you, you meet that person in a room full of other people and you kind of do this sort of dance around and don't talk about the subject and it becomes the elephant in the room and, and, and all of that kind of thing. You know, so much of the exchange in this passage it, it actually is about what Jesus didn't say, it seems to me. You know, and it's interesting to know, you see, Jesus didn't say to Peter three times, do you love me? Because Jesus needed to know that Peter loved him. Jesus said it three times because he knew that Peter himself needed to hear that he still really 
passionately loved Jesus. Uh, and, and what he was trying to do really, and what he was doing, was resolving Peter's own doubts about his following of Jesus. You know, uh, and it's interesting that Jesus brings it all out into the open. He doesn't brush it under the carpet. Brushing it under the carpet never really works, unfortunately. You know, moving on and pretending it didn't happen doesn't really work, unfortunately. So what Jesus does is he brings it all out into the open. Yes, Peter, you did deny me three times, you know, and you need to know that I forgive you. You need to know that actually um, I, I, re I restore you. You know, you need to know, Peter, that actually you're better than that and that you don't have to be defined by what you've done uh, and that you are better than that. I, I can remember as a, as a young Christian, or perhaps just as a young, young bloke, actually, you know, often making mistakes. Um, I still do make mistakes, um, but I can remember as a, as a young guy, you know, making mistakes and going to church, talk with people that I respected in the church. Um, I was that at the time and kind of, you know, confessing stuff that I'd done wrong and and um, needing to get it dealt with. Uh, and two or three things struck me about the, the, the guys I went to see at the time and how they handled it and how they handled me uh, and that have stayed with me ever since. The first thing is, they never judged me for what I'd done wrong. You know, and we see in the story, Jesus doesn't judge Peter for what he's done wrong. You know, they still loved me uh, for what I'd done wrong. And we see the same here. But Jesus so still loves Peter. Uh, you know, and that's a great first step, you know, not to judge, but still to love people, no matter what it is that they've done wrong. The second thing that I remember they did is that they were very clear yeah, actually, what I had done was wrong. Uh, and it does need confessing. And it does need addressing and dealing with. And in the story, you know, it's not said, but Jesus is very clear that, you know, what Peter had done does need addressing and does need uh, dealing with for Peter's own sake. Um, and the third thing that struck me is that, you know, in those days when I went to see these guys and they pray with me, they had a belief in me that I was better than the mistakes that I'd made. And that's so what we see Jesus doing here, isn't it? He has got a belief that Peter is better than the mistakes he's made. You know, and isn't that a great thing? Jesus has this belief in you and I that we find hard to grasp, that he, that we, he believes we are better than the mistakes that we make. And because of that, you know, he can bring restoration. Because of that, he brings forgiveness. Because of that, you know, he brings change to our lives. You know, whatever mistakes you and I have made in our lives, Jesus is so much bigger than them. You know, so that we can confess them. We can and we should admit them. Brushing them under the carpet is never a strategy. You know, pretending they never happen and hoping things move on is never really a strategy. But with Jesus, because he is so much bigger than the mistakes we made, we can not only confess them and admit them, we can be restored by Jesus' own words. And rather than be defined by our mistakes or, or limited by them, they, just as Peter found, can become a springboard so that we go on to do what God is calling us to do. And what an example Jesus gives us here. One that, you know, we would do well to take on board when we make mistakes and one we would do well to take on board when people make other mistakes that affect us. You know, not to judge people, but to love them, to, to restore them and to know that we and they are better than the mistakes that we made. Let's just pray, shall we? Yeah, Lord Jesus, thank you for your example. Thank you for your amazing love and your passion for us, Lord. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to be defined by the mistakes that we've made and the things that we've done wrong or things that have been done wrong to us even. But like Peter in this story here, you call them out, Lord Jesus. You say, don't brush them under the carpet, but bring them here in front of you and you heal us, you restore us, you forgive us and you set us on the path, Lord, to do even greater things for you because you believe in us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.